J.D. Vance's comments strike at the heart of First Amendment debates, framing free speech as essential to the lifeblood of American democracy. Freedom of expression is often upheld as a critical safeguard, and both government and corporate censorship are frequently seen as direct threats to personal liberties. When Vance calls the First Amendment the most accumulated right, he's tapping into a widely held belief that preserving free speech is key to maintaining a functioning democracy. The ability to voice dissent, especially on divisive political topics, acts as a crucial defense against creeping authoritarianism. It's a damning non-answer for you to not talk about censorship. Obviously, Donald Trump and I think that there were problems in 2020. We've talked about it. I'm happy to talk about it further. But you guys attack us for not believing in democracy. The most sacred right under the United States democracy is the First Amendment. You yourself have said there's no First Amendment right to misinformation. Kamala Harris wants to use the power of government and big tech to silence people from speaking their minds. That is a threat to democracy that will long outlive this present political moment. I would like Democrats and Republicans to both reject censorship. Let's persuade one another. Let's argue about ideas and then let's come together afterwards. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. That's that's the test. That's the Supreme Court test. Tim, fire in a crowded theater. You guys wanted to kick people off of Facebook for saying that toddlers should wear the governor does that's have the floor. Fr- fire in a crowded theater. That is criticizing the policies of the government, which is the right of every American. Vance's critique of Kamala Harris and others for allegedly supporting censorship plays into a broader public fear that the political left is attempting to shape the narrative by labeling opposing viewpoints as misinformation. His remarks capture a widespread anxiety that efforts to curb misinformation are being weaponized to suppress legitimate political disagreement. This taps into a long-standing conservative skepticism toward large institutions, both corporate and governmental, collaborating to limit the free press. Many conservatives believe such actions threaten individual freedoms under the guise of promoting public safety or truth. For them, Healthy democracy hinges on vigorous public debate, not enforced silence. Vance's argument, which champions persuasion and open discussion over censorship, mirrors a deeply held conservative conviction that ideas should be tested through open discourse, not suppressed by external forces. By invoking the First Amendment, Vance frames this debate as one of survival, whether democratic values, like free speech, can withstand the pressure from those who seek to control narratives. His critique of censorship is also a reflection of a broader, underlying fear that individuals are losing their agency to express themselves freely in a world increasingly dominated by powerful institutions. At its core, Vance's rhetoric speaks to the psychological yearning for autonomy and the right to engage in meaningful discourse a yearning that grows more urgent in the face of perceived threats to personal freedoms.